Hello guys, welcome back to AWM FX. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, no matter where you are. So hopefully you guys out there are doing great and then uh watching so much of my videos or my previous videos and learn a lot of things, alright? Uh not only that, of course I hope it do improve some of your knowledge on the uh, supply and demand and also uh, gain if possible gain a bit of uh, money of from from the market all right so uh, I, I'm not saying that I'll encourage you guys to test it out right away but at least it will improve uh, whatever knowledge that you guys already have all right so today I'm gonna make it more complicated uh, yeah like what I have said things are going deeper and deeper and deeper all right so today I will introduce you to a few more complicated terms uh names by the way names are just names all right so it does not matter what uh, name it is as long as you know the uh, function of it and the character of it all right so today we'll talk about maximum pain level so on the previous episode i already introduced to you what is a quashimoto a type the type of quashimoto and of course i'm going to introduce you to uh, the type of uh uh, price action all right a few types of the price action, price action and we're going deeper and deeper so of course now we're talking about the maximum pain level so which is very very important if we are trading a qml all right so let's look at what is a maximum pain level so now let's assume that we have a very uh normal all right a very normal movement of a price all right so there is a price going up and down and it creates what we call it as a resistance over here all right so if give a lot of traders out there um i would say that the traditional traders or those news newbie, newbies traders saying that a uh, price will always reject at the resistance or always reject at the support so is it true actually it it, it has a certain amount of uh should i say uh concept that is true but you have to a lot of you do not learn or do not understand the whole concept so what we have here we have a resistance so we have a r1 and r2 we we'll label it as a r1 and r2 resistance one resistance two so what happened happen eventually is that the price will reach this area again all right so for uh new traders or a lot of traders out there they might think oh the price will reject this time because it has rejected twice previously all right yes reject, rejected twice previously so eventually what happened was that uh, a lot of people will sell at the resistance all right like previous one but uh sorry and then they will place their stop loss over here all right so but something happens all right the price does not stop at the resistance it boodles all the way to the top all right it boodles all the way to the top so a lot of you will get their stop loss uh, hit and then you lost your money all right you lose your money then eventually the price came down to this uh resistance again but now it has become a support all right it has become a support so we're gonna label it as a s1 and s2 all right and the same thing is the same thing so a lot of you will be thinking yeah this time around this is a very 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 strong uh, resistance or support so the price will likely will rebound all right will likely to rebound all right so you'll place your stop loss below but what happened was that the price came down all the way and hit your stop loss it will hit your stop loss all right then you got very frustrated because you have been selling all right at the rejection you have been selling at the uh support and resistance now the price reached this area again resistance it creates another resistance all right it creates another resistance now your some of the trader they might think okay it is uh, it's time for me to change my strategy instead of buying or selling uh from the rejection of the support and resistance now i'm gonna think about breakout trade all right i believe a lot of you heard about it the breakout trade what does it mean is that the price once it break out from this support resistance i'm gonna follow the trend i'm gonna follow the trend all right the trend is my friend i'm gonna follow it so eventually what happened was that you're gonna place your stop loss above sorry and then your stop loss got hit 
and the the price came down all the way. All right, the price came down all the way. So this is what this line over here is called the maximum pain level. All right, this line over here is called maximum pain level. So what one of the reason is that uh if some of you do not understand a lot of the big trader the big banks they can see your pending order and they of course they can also see your stop loss and like what i what what when i mean they can see is that it's not particularly your trade all right because how many lot can you put in 100 lot 200 lot 300 lot that is nothing but they can see uh May, how should I say, majority of the people placing their trade and their stop loss. And that is where we call it as a liquidity. Alright, that is where we call it as a liquidity. And the price is where, where the big bank will gonna push their price over there and hit your stop loss so that they can gain their money. Alright, they can gain their money. So this line over here is the maximum pain level. So what we have is the uh, simple uh, character of a maximum pain level. So first is that maximum pain level happen because of the greed and the fear of a retail traders. All right, if you uh, remember on the first episode, I already told you about the big bang is the shark. All right, you guys out there are just the sardine fish. All right, the small small fish. So it happens because of your greed. All right, and your fear. All right, the big bang, uh, the big trader, they know where is where you place your stop loss and your pending order. So when uh, maximum pain level lay, level is created by the big trader to hunt stop loss of S and R traders and breakout traders. So it's very very simple. A lot of people when we start learning of uh, trading forex or whatever, we will talk about the S and R traders or we talk about support and resistance, support and resistance, support and resistance. But the real meaning of support and resistance is what a lot of people do not understand. Then of course a lot of say that oh now we are talking about the breakout trader means that when the price break out from the support resistance will follow the trend the trend is your friend the trend is your friend this is also a mistake there of course i won't say that it does not work but just that the probability is very uh, i would say not very high i would say very low i'll say not very high all right so the third character is that as an advanced supply and demand traders we look at normal traders stop loss position so we must know all right now we have to think the other way around we think that ourselves as a big trader our big bank we always think that normal trader where does they place your stop loss so that is the the position that they place your stop loss is where we will entry all right that's where we will entry and now what we're doing is that we follow the shark all right we are no more the sardine we are the shark all right you have to think the way around so actually, if you look at the whole thing, maximum pain level over here, what does it look like? Yeah, it's, it, it, it's starting to get a bit complicated, right? It's starting to get a bit complicated. But overall, what does it look like over here? It actually is a QML. So if you look at it properly, right? If you look at it properly, so we have high, 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 low, all right? All right, then it's a break to the high. It's a break to the high. And when it comes down, it creates a lot of sort, a, a sort, um, many things, many funny, funny things before it breaks the previous low, All right? Before it breaks the previous low. So this overall is actually another, uh, I'll say another form of QML, All right? Quasimodo level. And the important is that we are not looking for QML, All right? I repeat. Uh, if you watch some of my previous videos, I already repeat every time. I do not consider QML is my entry point because QML is just a signal telling me that there is a reversal or even we call it as a continuous uh, trade, continuous trend, but it's some sort of reversal also. What we are looking at is the maximum pen level where a lot of uh, big uh, retail trader will place their stop loss. That is where we're going to place our entry all right so some of you guys cannot imagine what i've just told you uh the maximum pen level all right this is the, exactly how it looks like so how does a lot of people cannot imagine how does it interpret into a qml how does it look like in a qml so it's very simple 
uh, I'm going to label it as uh, usual, R1, R2, uh, S1, S2, and R, whatever it is. Then this is our maximum pain level line. All right, we have a maximum pain level line. And this is what it looks like. All right, in a simple, simple form. All right, it looks like this. It looks like a, all right, high, 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 low, ultimate high, high. And then there is a manipulation. The price suddenly pick up before it falls all right this is the uh, decision point another term that i'm gonna introduce it later this is a decision point where the price is likely to come back to this area before it falls so does the, the, the another common question a lot i always get is that is it the maximum pain level always aligned with the kml no that is no always sometimes the mpl will be lower all right hear me properly sometimes the mpl will be lower than the qml sometimes the mpl will be higher than the qml all right and then sometimes it's at the top of the head and not only that sometimes mpl does not exist all right for some trade mpl does not exist but however for normal trade mpl does happen all right it's just that in a matter of switching to time frame small time frame or higher time frame you have to look at it and search for it right it's very very obvious it's very very obvious uh how obvious it is you have to train your eye of course i want to give you a few examples all right so now let's jump into the chart and i'm going to show you how we're gonna i'm gonna identify the qml and of course how i'm gonna identify my mpl so i'm going to do it step by step so listen to me properly uh this will be uh, purely on the sell setup all right so later i'm going to show you a buy setup right it's the same thing it's just that how you're going to flip the chart okay so first of all first of all what is the condition that we are looking at right now if you can see that the price is actually moving or breaking the previous high right that is always keep breaking the previous high wait a minute all right so it's keep breaking the previous high so making this is a bullish all right bullish trend all right bullish trend all right okay so it ends somewhere around here all right so let's follow and see what happened next so if you can see that all this while there is no breaking of previous low there is no breaking of previous low but however when it reached this area sorry for that when it reached this area this is the low all right you can see that it's a very very obvious low right here all right so the price eventually came down, all right? It eventually came down and breaks the low, right? I'm going to remove all this uh, arrow line, dotted purple line. So eventually it came down and break this low, right? So it, it's a very, very obvious break. It's a very, very obvious break. So this is a qualified QML setup. So how we are supposed to do is that I'm going to take a horizontal line right horizontal line but i'm going to use the trend line as my horizontal line so let's place it so this line here this line here is what i consider as a qml and always always label it always always label it because you are start you are just learning all right you're learning you must know where's your qml so where is your ultimate higher high it's right here right the ultimate higher high is right here it's so obvious ultimate higher high so when it came down, it makes a lot of funny, funny stuff, all right? Before it jumps, uh, it came down all this way. So eventually, this is a very good setup of a QML, all right? QML. And how you approach this trade, how you approach this trade. So it's very simple. So uh, I'm going to place another line over here, all right? I'm going to place another line. So this line is nothing. I'm going to change it to red color first. Sorry for that. I'm going to change it to red color. So this line over here is what I consider as a MPL maximum pain level. So how I'm supposed to find my maximum pain level? Uh, step by step, first you have your line. All right, you have your line. Then you place your line at an area where there is a lot of rejection. All right, a lot of rejection, and it's somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. All right, somewhere around here. I'm going to remove my QML for this moment so that you can see. It's somewhere around here. If you look at the uh, the graph, 
that I shown you just now, I'm looking at a area, all right, that is something like this. All right, I'm looking at the area something like this. Uh, maybe I'm gonna change it to how I'm gonna change it. Change it to dot the line into line. Yes. All right. So it's more obvious. So this is what I'm looking for. This part over here is what I'm looking for. So this line over here is my uh, MPL. This is my MPL maximum pain level. So similarly, I'm gonna label it my maximum pain level. All right, maximum pain level over here. And what do we have? Resistance. How many resistance do we have? How many rejection do we have? Right? How many resistance or rejection? So if you look at it properly, I'm gonna place it a bit lower. Right? So we have a lot of rejection over here. All right. And we have a uh, uh, the indecision over here. This is what we call it indecision, or we call it as a uh base a base all right rarely base drop indecision right and we have a lot of rejection right if you can move it even lower it's better so rejection all the way so many one two three four five and then came over here there is a lot of rejection a, another indecision drop base rally drop base rally all right so when you reach this area you can see that there is a lot of rejection all this rejection and that it's a rally base rally all right so what happened is that the price if you look at it pro properly the price came up into this area before it plunged down and then breaks the low all right it breaks the low so this is a qualified qml mpl the camera is on the top but it's not important so this is the mpl so where do i enter so basically your enter area is over here all right your entry point is over here all right basically your entry point is over here however however it depends on how you look at it so i sometimes i might place it just like this all right i might place it just like this this is my entry zone this is my entry zone all right so what happened let's see the seat come back to this area all right just wait patiently Nicely done, you can see that the price came into this zone, this small little zone before it continuously going down. So, like what I tell you, is it accurate? It depends on how you look at it. So some people might argue, if that's the case, why I just why don't I just use my QML? If even if I place it at the QML, my entry at the QML is correct. Right? Is correct, but this is not the the part that you'll be looking at. The important is that you must look for something like this this pattern. This is the important uh, 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 MPL maximum pain level, right? Hopefully, I I am not trying to confuse you you guys. So this is when it comes up, plunge down. I'm looking for a zone, whatever zone that is fresh. For me, this is very very fresh. All right, so eventually the price, uh, let's get it from the replay mode. Where is my chart? Right. It's over here. All right, so if you look at it, the price came into exactly this zone and then continuously going down. So how big is your risk reward ratio? I think it's uh, quite big. Quite big, quite big. It reverses all the way. It reverses all the way. And eventually, over here, you have another QML. If you can see it properly, you have another QML, but this is a continuous trade. All right. Price moving up and then plunge down and then come back to this area before it continues going down. All right. You will have a lot of opportunity of trades. All right. You have a lot of opportunity of trades. It's just a matter of how you're going to look at it, how you're going to look at it. All right, so this is a very nice example of a QML uh, buy. All right, it's a QML, uh, sorry, it's a QML sell.
sorry, where is my, my chart? Over here. Right? So, let the knowledge sink in. Alright? Let the knowledge sink into your mind. Uh, look at it. Alright? Hopefully, I don't confuse you guys. Consume it. This is a very perfect example of how you should be finding your KML first. And then follow up by your MPL. Alright? Then find where is the rejection. The area where it rejects a lot and area where there is an indecision. Alright? And suddenly the price came up before it plunged down. Alright? Before the plunge down. And this is a nice place for your entry. A very, very nice place. And of course, in between, there is some, uh, I will say there is some price action. Some type of price action, uh, which I'm going to show it uh, in the next video. In the next episode All right so this is a cell setup All right so next i'm going to show you an example of a buy setup All right it's actually it's a flip of the chart all right so look at it let's follow the trend so what happened is that you can see the trend is going lower low right let's follow the trend low high lower low lower high and keeps breaking the low all right it's very obvious it keeps breaking the low and it creates the ultimate low at this point all right at this point so this is the ultimate low all right so i'm going to get this arrow line out so that you guys can see properly so what happened is that that is the price rejected over here and uh, a lot of people will argue that this will be a double bottom setup it's, it depends on you it does not matter for me i don't look at double bottom double top i just look at uh focus on the qml the qml itself Right, so uh, let's follow up this, which is the higher, the previous high. All right, this will be the previous high. So this is lower high. I'm going to label it as lower high over here. All right, so lower high. So important is that the price has to break this area, has to break this area. But now let's look at the condition. Has it broken this high over here? No, not right. So it's not qualified as a qml yet so let's wait and see all right all right so now does it qualify as a qml yes it's qualified as a qml so what we're going to do is that we're going to label things slowly by slowly and con and we're going to find our mpl and of course the uh, the area where we're going to have our setup all right have our entry so this is our qml all right q ML the Quashimodo level for a buy, right? Is it important or should I enter directly over here? So if you enter over here, where is your stop loss? It will be a very very huge zone, right? It will be a very huge zone. So I'm gonna place it somewhere around here. So it will be forty six over pips, right? It will be forty six over pips. Is this what you've been looking at? If it is, then go ahead. I have uh, nothing to say about it. <laughs> All right, I have nothing to say about it. So when it breaks high, now we are looking for what I told you. We are looking for the manipulation. And in this case, if you look at it, the manipulation, where is the, the actual manipulation? A lot of people will argue this is the zone. This is a zone. All right. This is a zone. This might be an entry. But is this really important? Does it have any sub significant support resistance, any rejection behind? No. All right. You can see that nothing is very, very clear. It's very clear. Even I, I close up. Uh, look to the left some more. You can see that there's nothing. It's very clear out here. So it's not important. So a lot of people will got trapped at this area. Will get trapped at this area. So we just ignore this for this for this moment. Uh, should I go into lower time frame? You might. All right, you might. So I'm gonna switch it to thirty minutes. Easy for me to get some reference. All right, nicely done. All right. So over here, I'm gonna find the area where there is a lot of rejection. A lot, a lot, a lot. We're talking about multiple rejection, those kind of rejection. So uh, I'm gonna place a line. How I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna place a line. Uh, I'm gonna label it red color, right? So this will be my maximum pain level. How am I supposed to find this maximum pain level? Place it at the area where there is a lot of rejection. All right. So this is the area. All right. This is the area. So if you can look at if you look at it properly, this is a very very obvious area where there's a lot of rejection, indecision, all right, and then rejection. 
right? It's around this area. Right? So this is my MPL, maximum pain level, right? Maximum pain level, right? Other than this, is there any other place that is qualified as an MPL? Uh, no. If you if you look at it properly, no, there is nothing more, right? Nothing more out there. So this is my this is already my maximum pain level, right? Maximum pain level. Okay. So what happened next is that uh, once I go into this time frame, uh, important notes here, a very important notes is that for a cell setup, always look for a supply zone above your MPL, right? And for a buy setup, always look for a demand zone below your MPL. Right, so over here where we where is our zone? We only have one very nice zone. Very, very nice zone over here. This is how I'm gonna label my zone. This is a very nice zone. So eventually there is nothing left, alright, except for this zone. So let's see whether the seed came into my zone. Alright. And when I switch it to a high time frame, there is nothing there. So Let's see what happened. Let's see. All right. Maybe I'm going to place it. Let's monitor. Or maybe I switch to even higher time frame. So it will be faster a bit. It will be a bit faster. So even if I go into higher time frame, the H4, this is another thing that I'm going to teach uh, in later chapter, we call it as a confirmation. So once I switch it to a higher time frame, we can see that there is another engulfing. This is a very nice engulfing. So this is our confirmation. All right, it's our confirmation. All right. So where is the price moving? All right, the price moving. Price moving. Price moving. How come it looks so long? Where are you going? The price. All right. So there is an, another type of confirmation is that uh, we call it as a compression. That is a very obvious compression over here. All right. I'm going to focus about compression later. So is the price coming back or not? Ah, not sure. So is this a fail setup? I'm so not sure. I just find it blindly find something and just share it. All right. Uh, oops. Wow. <laughs> oops and wow. All right. Even myself, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Ah, uh, how accurate do you want it to be? All right. How accurate do you want it to be? So if you look at it, if I switch it back to the 30 minutes, I did not move my zone. I did not move my zone. So this is exactly where I label my zone. Right? That's why I, I, I told you that my definition of my supply and demand zone is different from other people. Because it works very well for me. And uh, stop loss. Okay, let's talk about stop loss. All right. Stop loss previously was 46 pips. So what is my stop loss over here? All right. From 46 pips, I have lowered into 5 pips. All right. So, but sometimes I, I have to be very honest. Sometimes I do give a bit of buffer due to the spread or due to the news. I do not know. All right. So sometimes I give a bit buffer. Even I give it to 9 pips or 10 pips. All right. So let's assume here we have a 9 pips. Right, my pips, and I might widen my zone. Right, so we go back to H4, and how we're gonna exit this trade? Okay, how we're gonna exit this trade? All right, so it's actually very simple, very very simple. Over here, you can see that that is a very very obvious zone. All right, a very obvious zone over here. You might exit it over here. Don't be greedy. This is a we call it a compulsory exit zone means that you either you have to exit everything or you exit half of your trade or some of your trade and then leave the rest to run it to run all the way so our risk reward 
example for this trade will be around this is our stop loss and this is our zone so it'll be 1 to 15 right it's around 1 to 15 let's give it something my trade so 1 to 15 i do not know how accurate do you guys still want it to be all right so this is a very very simple explanation of a uh, QML buy uh, and sell and of course you by using the max, uh, maximum pain level way of looking at it how we're going to accurately find our zone all right so in my next video I'm going to show you about what is a fake out all right we're going to explain about fake out because I I'm going to I dedicate the whole ep next episode on fake out uh, for you the reason is that there is not one type there is not two types there will be three types of fake out all right so hopefully you guys get a few tips or tricks from uh, watching my videos and uh, definitely i would appreciate you guys if you can just uh, give me a thumbs up all right and of course subscribe to the channel uh, so that you guys won't miss out any on the updates on the this mini series of supply and demand all right so hopefully you guys enjoy everything and see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Thanks.